Hi, I'm Brad Genix of Ron Zeal Guitar Center in Avon Lake, and I'm working with the Avon Lake Public Library doing our beginning guitar lessons at ALPL YouTube. Our next one in our series is going to be learning how to play arpeggios. Now, what is an arpeggio? Well, an arpeggio is a chord broken down into single notes, okay, which will sound like this. I'm just plucking the notes of a chord. Instead of strumming it, that's when we're strumming a chord. We play it in single notes, individual notes, called an arpeggio. Well, how do we do that? It's not really that hard. It sounds kind of nice. It can make just you know a regular song that you might just be strumming along kind of slow like this. It can add some nice flair to it. There's a bunch of patterns we can do. You can do this on any chord, in any style. We're going to keep some basic chords going first. We've done the D, C, and G in our last video. Um, and I'm going to mix up some different chords so you can see some different ideas you can do with this. This is assuming we can already push down some basic chords. When I'm saying A minor, C, we're not going to go through how to finger a C chord. You should already know how to do that in, uh, in the previous lesson. So you want to make sure you've looked at those first, because that would slow us down in this one. We're going to take the D chord first because it's only got the four strings. So I'm pushing, pushing a D chord down with my left hand. I'm going to pluck each individual string just like this. This is also a really good way to check yourself. I think I talked about that in the earlier videos. When you're playing a chord, you want to see if it's ringing out right. All your fingers are pushing down right. Pluck each string just like that. Make sure they're ringing. You're basically doing an arpeggio. We're going to teach you how to put some rhythm to it and maybe a couple little patterns. That's some of like a waltz one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's really simple. All I'm doing is walking up the strings and coming right back down and thinking one, two, three, four, five, six in my head. As you can see, I'm just picking each string straight towards the floor, then I'm coming right back to my face. And think one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Now when I switch strings though and chords, what do we have to do differently? Well the D chord is really nice and that's why I started with it because it's just the top four strings and it works out perfectly for a one, two, three, four, five, six. When I go to a C chord, I've got five strings and I said you have to skip a string to make it the same idea and pattern. You can play it with just straight like this, which is fine. I'm going straight towards the floor. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm coming back one. I want to keep that same idea and pattern that I'm doing here. It sounds more like a song, if you will. And what am I doing? Well, I'm playing the C chord. Remember, a C chord has five strings, the top five. I'm plucking, obviously, the bass note always first. I'm skipping the fourth string and jumping right to the top three strings with my pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That goes for any chord that has five strings. A minor, I could have gone to A minor if I wanted to. I could go to G, which is six strings. What am I doing there? I'm obviously I'm hitting the bass note, the lowest string that closest to my face and I'm playing in the chord is a G, and it's a third fret bottom string. I'm skipping the next two strings and obviously keeping with the theme of the top three strings. Just like that. And that's in a 6 8 time, that's a waltz feel. You can do straight 8, you know, it's like this. There's a lot of patterns we can do, so we're going to look at the next pattern. This pattern will be more of like if I'm playing um, maybe knocking at heaven's door in this way. I can do that. Well, what am I doing? All I'm doing is plucking. The same idea I did before, but I'm only doing the, these three strings like that. One, two, three. I'm going to D, strumming right through it. And I'm going to the A minor. Now that one I have to play the whole measure. I'm doing it kind of slow, so you can kind of hear how. But I put this. I'm going to put the song, strumming out. That's about up to speed when we show in the video. Wow, 
how do you do that? That gets a little fast and it sounds kind of tricky, but it really isn't. I'm doing the same ideas I was doing on the slower ones. That's the pattern I'm using for this one, and there's many patterns. This is just one I'm coming up with. I'm plucking down. As you'll see, I'm plucking on the six, three, two, three, top string. So these are the string numbers I'm gonna be telling you. Six, three, two, three, one, two, three, two. Same idea there. So I'm basically going towards the floor three strings, coming back one, and then going to the top three strings. A minor, same idea. As you can see, this can get a little tricky, um, and it takes a lot of practice to do that. So you can see why our earlier videos were talking, making sure you can push your chords down properly, and you've got them all memorized well. And then when we did our speed developer exercise, you can see how that can really help with this, of hitting the right strings, because you're jumping strings all the time. So it does take some practice. You just want to go slowly. There's many, many, many patterns out there. We're just giving you a couple to work on. They're kind of basic and easy. But this will get you playing some arpeggios. Make your music playing little, just rather than simply strumming chords. Because that can get a little boring. You can work on some rhythms, but just really just spices it up a little bit. It's great for background music, too. You can play anything and just noodle around chords and it all sounds really good. I hope you enjoyed this. This concludes our third lesson and we'll see you next time.